Good morning, church. And uh, this is morning. I wanted to just to thinking about the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And we know that the whole of the Trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, as involved in our salvation, in electing us and in uh, saving us, and also right now, it's like a revealing the work of God in our lives. But often times of me, we may forget about this fact that I am indwelt by the Holy Spirit. I think that I am an ordinary man or an ordinary woman. But we are much more than that. Yes, we are ordinary people, but with an extraordinary ability. Because of the indwelt, whole, indwelling Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 19, where Paul met a certain group of disciples, verses 1 and 2, Paul asked these people, Did you receive the Holy Spirit? Maybe Paul, like looking at their life, or maybe looking at their conversation, or the lifestyle, he maybe realized that these people doesn't have the Holy Spirit. So Paul asked this question, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And these people said, we did not even hear about, we did not even hear about the Holy Spirit. So then Paul shared the gospel, they got baptized, and that historical narration says that they received the Holy Spirit. Paul is saying to the Corinthians, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Don't you know? In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, don't you know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? Isn't it amazing that I need a rem reminding and a reminder about who I am? Paul re again repeats in the first Corinthians chapter 6 verse 20. He says that, verse 19 says, Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you are from God, you are not your own. Think about that. We are purchased. We are different today. Yes, we were going to enter into different work and we're going to face different challenges practically in this world. But we have been dwelt by the Holy Spirit. That's amazing. Church is the house of God. And the Holy Spirit speaks in the church. In Revelation chapter 2, Revelation chapter 3, when you read those uh, seven churches where Jesus is addressing, and at the end of the e churches, he says that he who has an spirit, he who has an ear, let him hear what the spirit say to the churches. What the spirit is saying to the church. What is the spirit is saying to you today? And it always uses this word, the word of God. That's amazing. That's a Bible is an amazing part in our life. We study the Bible, we read the Bible, we meditate on the Bible, we, we think about the promises of God, we sing about those promises. We, we, Bible is an integral part of, of our life. That's an amazing. We can take a vacation, we can go for a holiday, but we can never take a vacation from this word of God. I need it. This is my daily food. And this is amazing. But churches can lose that fervency in the in, in a over a time because it's possible but that's what paul says that don't you know don't you know right like you have the holy spirit work of god this is the work of god we are a work of god and what we are doing today is in a work of god think about it and this is amazing privilege what god has given to us we are indwelt by the Holy Spirit. In the Old Testament, the priest had to carry the articles of the tabernacle on the shoulders. They had to carry it on the shoulder, not on the cart, not by any animal, but it has to be carried on the shoulder. Think about that. Amazing. We are today like that, carrying that, that amazing glory of God, the Spirit of God. And it is amazing. And that's amazing. As we said last week that like uh, about the spirit, Lord, you fill me today. You fill my mouth. 
Feel my words, feel my looks, feel my attitudes, feel my thoughts today. Lord, help me, Lord. That my that then we can sing like a psalmist says in Psalms chapter 19. Let my let the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable to you, O Lord. Amen. God bless this morning in Jesus' name. Amen.